Trenuj w sprzęcie dla najlepszych. Wejdź na groundgame.com. Man, I mean, obviously the veteran at this point. What's the feel for you on fight week nowadays, man? Is it? I mean, is is it change anything, or is this just a day at the office? Hey, man, same old hat. You know what? It's uh, UFC has been home for a long time, and it's going to continue to be home for an even longer time, man. Uh, I still remember back. I've been saying this in interviews. I remember back to our first walk, at October 14th, 2006, man. UFC 64. The headliners were Rich Ace Franklin and Anderson the Spider Silva. The co-main event was Kenny Florian. And uh, Sean Shirk, and there were so many great bouts on that card. And to be the second fight on that card, we were following Kurt Pellegrino, and he had submitted uh, not Rafael Sunsau, his brother. And uh, then we got this uh, rear naked choke right after that. We won submission of the night, and um, we, that really launched us into our UFC career. You know, we had some other pretty big wins before that, fighting Josh Thompson and coming up close, uh, a close loss to uh, Gilbert Melendez and Strike Force, things like that. So we had a couple of good names. You know, uh, some good competition, but that really escalated us, I think, and um, made us a, a stable, you know what I mean, a, a staple in the UFC. So it's uh, it's amazing to think over 200 UFC pay-per-views later and countless fight nights, Ultimate Fighters, the new Contender Series, and the list goes on and on, and we're just thankful for to be here and uh, still have a home in the UFC, man. It's nuts, man. Like you said, you're a staple, man. I mean, you're, you're part of the fabric, man. I mean, do you do you think about, the, you know, the end and how tough it's going to be? I mean, is it going to be tough to walk away? Or will you be like, dude, I did enough of that. I'm good now. Right. You know what, man? I try not to put a number on it of years, a number of fights, a year per se or whatever, because I feel like a lot of times if you put a ceiling on something, maybe you don't always get to that um, to that goal. Or maybe you don't get to that number or that year or whatever it may be. So um, as long as I'm having fun. I'm going to be in there swinging and putting on a show for the fans because they deserve it more than anybody. So, um, yeah, every athlete's, you know, profession, like, you know, comes to an end, at, you know, sometime or another. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, look at Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? It, it, the dude could probably still, still throw on the shoes and go put up 30 points in a game right now. You know what I mean? But uh, it's just it's amazing to see what guys like him have done still in the sport, and they're always around it no matter what. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh You know, there comes a time in every every athlete's you know career. That that's why wrestling has been such a um, a big part of my you know my career. You know, coaching youth, coaching uh, you know kids, coaching high school, being around the gym all the time. That's what really makes it worthwhile. Being able to pass on the knowledge that I've learned from my coaching staff at Team Alpha Male, being able to pass it on to these uh, the younger generation. That it, it always gives you part of you know always keeps you in the sport. Yeah. You talk about having fun, but uh, I guess winning is probably a lot more fun than, than not winning, right? So, I mean, yeah. how important was that last one to just get that result again and get that feeling again? Absolutely. Michael Johnson was a friend of mine before we even competed. I remember meeting him at Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri a decade ago. Super nice kid. And he told me, he's like, wait, I'm going to be in the UFC someday. I said, absolutely, man, believe in you. And that's what it takes. You know, it's not just dreaming. It's, it's believing, you know, and knowing that uh, you're taking the right steps, buying into the system in uh, – So, you know, having, you know, a, a win against him and kicking off a four-fight contract, it felt good to uh, get our hand raised in, um, you know, a clean a clean slate with the UFC, if you will. No doubt. Then you got this matchup. I'm curious because at first I thought it was kind of a weird matchup, right, you know, because he's kind of new to the UFC. and then he, But then I thought about it. I'm like, but wait, Olympic wrestler, man. So what did you think when you heard this? Were you, like, excited about it or did it seem weird to you too? I tell you what, man, the first thing I saw was uh, – <laughs> A text message of a picture of this big old yoked out dude with the medal around his neck, all jacked up, man, bald head, and veins popping out of his neck. And we were like, oh, man, all right. And then, you know what? We just uh, we, we put our head down and we said we're going to go to work and we're going to put a, you know, a hurt on this guy. And the reason I like this matchup so much is because we're not wrestling the Olympic silver medalist, Mark O'Madson. We're simply fighting the inexperienced mixed martial artist in Mark Madsen. And I probably have as many fights as him and all of his component, uh, his opponents combined. And um, we know a little something about, uh, you know, MMA wrestling too. I'm not sure if those guys have checked the, stat, uh, the stats lately, but we've, we've taken a couple of guys down in our day in the cage. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Like, I mean, it would seem, as you said, you're the vastly more experienced fighter. I would imagine the striking is a lot better. But is there a little bit of inside of you? It's like, I'm going to get at least one takedown on this guy. Damn right. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm going to do it for all the wrestlers. Uh, Team USA showed out at the Olympics uh, 
couple weeks ago, man. A bunch of medals, a couple of golds, man. The men's and women's team, it was awesome. So we're going to carry that flag for, uh, for USA. That's awesome. Did you watch the, the USA wrestling at all? And, and, and what did you think of that performance? And do, do you see Gable Stevenson talk about maybe coming to the UFC? What, what do you think? You're hoping that happens? Uh, absolutely, man. I consider him the baddest man on the planet. You know what I mean? And uh, I know Francis and Ghana is up there right now. Uh, Ghana is up there right now, too. But I tell you what, man, watching training videos of Gable, I've been watching him since he was in junior high and high school. You know what I mean? And um, seeing him just come through these ranks and just destroy people. And to be up 23 to zero for all of his opponents in the Olympics and then to be down in the finals and to be able to come back against such an amazing competitor that he was up against, a multiple world champ, an Olympic medalist, and for him to stay so poised, you know, and just so flawless in his victory and just put those points up so quick. And then when he, he Matt returned the guy out of bounds, just like spiked him like the dude was a feather. It was unreal just to see he's far beyond his age. You know, he wrestles. You know, he trained with Brock Lesnar. I heard he ragdolled Lesnar. I mean, obviously, there's an age difference there, but still, it's Brock Lesnar. Let's be serious, you know. Um, so I think the sky's the limit for that guy to see him in, uh, in the cage one day. I wouldn't want to be on the other side of him. That's awesome. Last thing for me, I mean, look, we know what kind of fight we're getting when you step in there, so we don't have to ask. It's going to be exciting. But let me ask you, win streak. This will be a big win, co-main event, you know, Olympian. Like you said, starting this new contract, win streak. So what is, what is the plan for you right now? What's, what's, what are the goals right now? Keep plugging away, having fun, doing what we've done. Um, you know, gold is always in our sights. Um, the 155 pound division is more stacked than it's ever been, you know. But I believe we've always been one of those guys. You know, we've been close to the top, you know, number one contender fights against Ben Henderson, you know what I mean? Um, we've knocked off some big names who were either world champions or former or prior world champions, whatever you call it. Um, but I think a, a fight like this gets us at least – back towards the ranking system. Not going to say we're going to break the top 15 by any means, but 155 is stacked. I love being part of the most um, dominant, uh, exciting, you know, competitive division in, uh, in the UFC. And, um, man, I'm just uh, blessed to be out here healthy and having fun, and we get to do what we love every day in and out.